Yeah. Okay, let's backtrack a bit, even before we talk about, because there's two things I want to ask. I want to ask about the move from this small congregation of about three, 400 people to radically exploding and being a mention in news features, in everything, in Bellevue, in, in the church to go to. Yeah. But before that, I want to ask about Mizizi, because that is the, the secret tool that has been used. Well, it's an important part of the yeah. story. I think what happened is I was very, I kept thinking, how does a church help people to move from that space? Because Jesus loves people just the way they are. So God never asks you, change your dressing, change your lifestyle before you come to me. He's like, come as you are. Mm -hmm. But he loves you too much to leave you that way. So the church must have tools to help you move from this area to where God wants you to be. And because remember I studied biochemistry, scientists are all about process. Mm -hmm. You've got a raw material, you have to ask, you, are, you know what the finished product needs to be. And for me, the finished product is somebody who's changing the world. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what's the process to get somebody to the place where they're actually changing mm -hmm. the world? And I, I tried a lot of stuff. There are things that churches in the West use. I tried a lot of the curriculum people are using. It just wasn't working. And so one day, I just in frustration, I quit. I just like, I was at Nairobi Chapel. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Uh, this is when I'd come back from the States. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's not working. And I'm the kind of guy who I can't do something that's not working just because people do it. I'm like, done. But because I was a pastor in charge of discipleship, when people get saved, they're sent to me. <laughs> people are still being sent to me. And Chapel was doing its business. So guys are still getting saved. And when they'd sign up, they'd be told, uh, the pastor is on a bit of a sabbatical. <laughs> He'll get back to you. <laughs> but thanks for signing up. So one day, um, a group of guys were really pissed because they had actually, they got saved and they really wanted help from the church. Eh? So they called the intern who had been telling them about this so-called pastor who's not ready. And they were like, dude, you, you, you're, you're messing around with us. This, in fact, I like guys who don't go to church because they don't even know church language. The guys are like, the customer service here is horrible. I mean, you, you guys have told us you'll call us. The last two weeks, nobody's calling. So the guy was a bit, I think he was a bit intimidated. So he just signed, up, signed them up and he told them the pastor will meet you, Kesha, in fact. Uh, that's his plan. So <laughs> he signed up these guys. Then he came and told me, these guys are demanding to see you tomorrow. It was a setup. Eh? He just basically set me up. So I and you remember up. the intern? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're friends. Actually, he's, 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 a, he's a senior pastor of a church in the U.S. now, a very large church in the U.S. Oh, nice. Um, so, um, so anyway, so he, 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 he called the meeting, so we, I showed up. Me, I knew it was a setup. So I was a bit pissed by this intern who's setting me up. Eh? And I was also a bit like, I'm not ready. I feel like I'm not ready. So, but I met these guys and I was like, guys, um, what we're doing hasn't worked. I'm not seeing any life change in it. I was just very honest with them. So I told them, I've been thinking in my mind of a process that would actually help people experience Christianity, experience the claims of Jesus for themselves. And not just intellectually, but actually practice them together. So I said, I'm willing to do an experiment with a few brave people. Because I said, I don't know if there's no guarantee it'll work. Yeah? Mm. And I said, and the problem is, Whoever is willing to do it has to pay for it because me, I don't believe in free things. And <laughs> I believe when you pay for something, you value it. And also, the truth is there's no budget for experiments right now. So, <laughs> so I was very blunt with them. And I said, number two, um, it'll also, you also have to put in the time. Because if I give you this curriculum, whatever we create, if you come at it just before class and you're trying to read quickly to pretend you've read, it's not going to change you. So I was like, me, I'm going to read, you guys have to read. And then number three, I said, you're going to have to be real. Because the thing I've come to be convinced is if people aren't real, they don't change. If we become fake the way we are, we are fake in church sometimes, it's not going to work. So if you're not willing to be real, this class is not for you. Mm. And so I was like, so sign up. If you want the class, let me know. And I told them snacks are free today, but from now on you pay. <laughs> so, so it was actually not a sales pitch for them to take the class. It was for them to, be it was for them to bounce. Because I was like, I'm not ready. Like all of them, there were 20 of them, all of them signed up. And the even crazier thing, I didn't get a list of 20. There were 20 in the class. I got a list of 30. So when I asked Barry, the intern, what's this? He told me, these are some of their buddies. Some of them said, that's exactly what my buddy in the office needs. So guys wrote the names of their friends. So I had 30. And the next Sunday, next, next Tuesday, 30 people showed up. So what I decided to do is, okay, I'm just going to, because I, I mean, now I have to start. So I, I said, okay, what have I seen as a problem in Christianity? What have I seen people not understanding or not being transformed in? So we just began this process. Every week I'd create a curriculum on one topic like that. And I tell guys, I'll give it to you. You read it. Then don't come to class to read. Come to class, we practice it. Mm. 
And so guys would do that. They would read, then they come to class, then we practice. It's, there's no theory here. Uli soma, sawa, tfani. And what we found is in that 10 weeks, I saw more transformation than I'd seen all my career before as a pastor. Like lives literally changed. God did such radical things in their lives. Like one lady was a chain smoker. She had been a chain smoker for years. She was cured like this. Just because of practicing what God had said we practice. Hmm. Um, so we saw so many life changes. It was such a dramatic 10 weeks. Those guys became such good buddies. They became so close. And even till today, I mean, many of them are still very good friends. In fact, many of them are still in my life as very good friends. Mm. Uh, the 10, 10 weeks later, I was like, there's something we've, 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 we've just, cracked. We've, yeah. There's something that's happened. It yeah. wasn't, and for me, it wasn't like I was deliberate. I really felt God was, because there's no way you can write a curriculum yeah. in 10 weeks. Yeah. Yeah? Like the transformation was just too wild. So after that, um, we, I was like, okay, done. This is not a school. You've done 10 weeks. We have to stop. So I stopped because it was like, it's long enough. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, next week, we're going to do a retreat. We'll pray for you guys. Uh, and from then on, we'll baptize the ones who want to be baptized and we'll be done. So we had a retreat, prayed for them. Maze God did some crazy things. I mean, people's lives were dramatically transformed. And I can tell you stories about people in that class today and what they're doing. Mm. And you won't even believe, you know. And what happened is we had a baptism. And now in the time that we were now doing the retreat, Mavuno had just been planted. So these things I didn't, my missus started in chapel, it ended in Mavuno. It yeah. finished in Mavuno, the first missus. Yes. It bridged. So we finished. So I was, I was like, guys, let's do a baptism. So Mavuno was at the South Sea Sports Club. There was a pool. Yeah. So I was like, we don't have a baptistry. Let's do a pool. So we jumped into the pool. These guys invited their buddies, like from the office, their parents, guys came. It was a bash. And then because... We're not a, we we had never done a baptism, there was no formality. It was just enter the water, we just dunk these guys. <laughs> the first guy I dunked, because I'm baptizing him, he came up, he gave a huge cheer, then he jumped in and dunked me. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. So everybody's laughing, everybody's high-fiving. I mean, it was the most joyous celebration I'd ever been in. I'd never, I'd never seen anything like that. I mean, it was such a fun celebration. Mm. And after the uh, baptism was over, one of the guys comes, gives me a hug, and then tells me here are the names of the next class. Like, <laughs> their workmates had signed up yeah, for the next class. We hadn't even talked about it. I had not even thought about our next class. But it's like, here are the names. Just call these guys. They're ready for next week. So I didn't even, I didn't even have time to lead the next one. I'd I think I was planning to be somewhere. So I called some of the two guys in the class. I told them, you guys are the ones leading. And that's how Mrs. E began. That's crazy. So there was no intention to make a book. Every week we'd give photocopies and we did that for many months. That's insane. It's only one day I went to a church. I went to Mamlaka Hill Chapel and I saw a guy carrying a book. And I was like, well, that's really cool. What is? What are you reading? I'm always curious when I see people with books. And he showed me and it's like, here's your book. <laughs> like he had taken all my photocopies. He had <laughs> taken them into a book. He was using it for discipleship in his church. And that's when I thought, oh my God, we actually wrote a book. And so that's how that story happened. I mean, today... In fact, I was going to ask that. To tell us about Mizizi, how far it's gone, about how many people have done. I'm sure... I mean, over I mean, 200,000 people. Uh, over, I mean, all continents, basically, or six continents in the world. It's been translated in over 10 languages. Uh, it's dramatic what God has done with it. I mean, it's been... It's, I've gone to... I remember one church I was in the States and they were telling me a story about... A, they went to Honduras. And... I didn't even know where Honduras was. I had to look on the map. Huh? <laughs> and they said that there's a police academy in Honduras uh, where a guy did Mizizi in the States, then went to Honduras and in Spanish led a, a Mizizi group in the police academy, the Kiganjo of, yeah. of that country. Yeah? And a third of the people of the police who graduated that year, he had taken them through Mizizi. And none of us knew. I mean, he was just, he was basically just photocopying the book and, and getting guys <laughs> through it, uh, which for me, I don't care. Yeah. I'm like, done. And it was so interesting because, I mean, hearing now from a second party who was sharing in his church about how he went to another country and then saw the impact of that. So it's in Sri Lanka, it's in Mexico, it's in Congo, it's in, I mean, it's all over the world, basically. And it's just God who's taken it there because we haven't actively even tried yes. to take it into those countries. It's people who it transformed their lives so much that they decided somebody else has to go through this somebody else has to by go hook through or crook. It. I yes. remember even um, within Mavuno how people would use their own money, fly every week to Uganda to to take people to, through to Mizizi. Take, exactly, yeah. and, and that's that how our church in, that's how our church in Uganda was started. It was people, business people here, 
going on their own dime to take other people through it. So when you experience a transformation, you want to help other people uh, go through that transformation. Okay, let's talk about now from the club. A lot of people didn't know Mavuno from that perspective of it being in that small South Sea Sports Club. Now, the transition of it moving into Bellevue and the explosion of that. Yeah, I mean... Because, I mean, from your story, I've not had you having to lead this many people. So I would like to hear it from... <laughs> it was a growth, huh? I mean, because remember, I moved with like a group of people.